Now I have 24 here and the bearing is only 21. So when I'm drawing in, and I draw in exactly the bearing as I see it there, I can see it fits into this space. So this space fits exactly. So here I have the bearing. How high is the step? The step is four high. How high is this part? It's six. So this bearing part, before I actually get the ball bearing, is slightly higher than that bit. And the inside is 32 and it's the same. So see if you look at the inside here, it's 32, which is the same as the 32 that we have over there. So from the first bit, this inside, the bottom plate of the bearing will be the same. Then we have the ball. We'll add in the center lines later. We can already add the threading here. And the top part of this bearing, if you look at the bottom plate, the bottom plate is 32, the top plate is 30 on the inside, okay? So this top part is slightly wider than the bottom, but on the other edge it's the same. So I can draw in the bearing, and remember two different plates, so the hatching on the top part will be different to the hatching at the bottom. Remember, a bearing is two plates put together with the balls on the inside. But this new diameter that I have here is 30 and this diameter is 32. And now this height that I've taken up is up to 21. Okay, so there's about three, so proportionally my proportions aren't really making a lot of sense at the moment. So you'll just have to be mindful when you're drawing in that that, that makes more sense. Okay, so actually this bearing would have been quite a bit higher, which means the balls might have need to be drawn a bit bigger. So let's just inflate it for the moment. You'll at least have the ability to erase and redraw this. Okay, so now we have the bearing fit into that 60 diameter spot. What can I fit in next? The next part that I see is I have this lid that has the step down to 66 and the width is 78. And I can see I have this 68 width and 80, which means that if I place my lid on here, the 78 means it's slightly smaller here, and when it comes down here, it's slightly smaller than this edge as well. So there's a gap here on both sides. Very important that you notice that. How thick are these? So this part is four. So if I have four, and remember I had three millimeters left after I put this in, it means that this will fit exactly onto that, but that also here there will be a small gap because the housing or this lid is going to fit on top of the bearing. It's not fitting straight onto this part. So there's also a small gap over there. So there's a small gap running all around this lid. Very important to notice that because this part is three, uh, four, and we had three left after putting in the bearing in that space. The top part of this lid is given to us as, so here it's given to us as 10 fully, take the four off, so we have six left. So there's six left plus the one that it's already lifted, so it won't be higher than this. It will still fall within this gap, but that's how the lid will look. Okay, and so that's how we know how the lid looks. On the inside we have the diameter of the lid is 30, so we just take the inside out, and here we can section the lid. Okay, so we've added the lid. Now we know that this part with the castle nut will sit in the center of that. First we can say, let's look at how this fits in. The other question that we want to ask is how this castle nut will fit in. So here there's a bit of logic to understand. If we add the castle nut on there, there's only a specific place where it can be. I can fit that on and the castle nut will have to align with the hole so it will end at a specific place. And then the castle nut will have to rest on the lid that I've already put in here. Because of gravity, it's actually going to rest on that lid. Okay, and the rest of this pin, which is not connected to anything else, it's only fixed from the castle nut at the top, that will actually be hanging down. 
and this diagonal side will push against this part, but it's hanging down, so gravity is going to play a part here. So in reality, we can start here by drawing in this castle net. So let's draw in the castle net first, so we know that's, that's done. And then you draw the castle net exactly as you see it on the paper. So they give it to you as this. And remember the castle net, we have a split pin in the middle, and the split pin is slightly wider than that. The split pin is slightly wider than that gap. If this is new for you, if you've forgotten this, please go look at your castle net uh, standard component drawings. And here we'll raise those lines because we don't section through standard components. And at the top we'll have a piece of this rod sticking out. How do we know there's a piece of the rod sticking out? If we look at what we have here, we have this from the hole to the top this top part as 8, right? And you can see that here the hole will be approximately there, so it's approximately the same. 9 is to the bottom, so say there's a millimeter or so, so you'll see a little bit of that component still there at the top because it's slightly bigger. Okay, how far down the shaft does this come? So does it take up the whole threading? We know that the threading is 42. What we have here is we have 24, plus 9, so we have th uh, 33 and 42, which means there's a 9 millimeter difference. So that means that I'll still see a little bit of my threading when I add these two together. Okay, so when I'm drawing on what's happening here, when I exit from there, there'll still be a piece of that threading going into the neck. Okay, then I have my component coming down here. How far down is it going? So what is this distance between the, this lid and the bearing? So remember the bearing was, so we had the bearing at 21. We had the lid at 10. And so there's 31 before I get to this bottom part. So now when I look at what I have on this, from the top here, I have 33, and then I have another 31. So in total here, I have 64 that I have to accommodate. But now, how far is it between this diagonal piece and this piece? And this is something that you can go calculate by using the distances that you have here. So this distance that you have, as well as this angle, you can calculate and see that there's approximately, when you go down, a small little gap between, so remember here will be a gap because this is 30 and that's 32. And when we get down here, there's a small gap running between, the, so this gap is slightly exaggerated, but there will be a small gap between these two. As we come down to the bottom, we're already out of this housing, and then we can have this bottom part of our component. So redrawing the detail exactly like you have it there. Of course, erasing these lines that stay on the inside. Okay. Um, because we also know that this part is, we're cutting through the middle, right? So we're not going to cut through this part. We'll actually have a portion here that's partially sectioned to show that the the top part of the shaft is solid, but the bottom part we're actually cutting through the middle and you'll only see this part of the component on the up opposite side of it. Okay, so I'm just going through how the assembly needs to work, like how to think through this assembly. Um, all the details in terms of the center lines you can of course add. Now these actually line up. Okay. But that's how these components will be assembled. Very important here, the split pin needs to be wider than that gap. You need to make sure you have all these gaps. All of these gaps will count technical marks. The indication here where it's fitting close to the shaft, where's the gap, um, all of these parts will be very, very important when you're looking at assembling this component. And this is how the final section view will look. So let's have a look at the memo. 
to see the other views. So we've drawn this view and we can look at what the other views look like. The other views will just be the normal external views. So just the housing from the outside, this hook at the bottom where we're cutting through the center. And you can see this line is actually given to you, the section line where we are cutting through with AA. And this is section AA. And then we have a normal external top view and you see a partial section over here. And so you might wonder what that is about. And that is only for us to be able to add our mounting dimensions. Remember, we are not allowed to add dimensions to hidden detail. So we need to show a partial section here to show the mounting dimensions. So just a note here, pay attention to these bubbles. Can you see that they are not correctly put in? Usually when we have the bubbles, we make sure that they all line up, either horizontally or vertically. So just pay attention that that's not correct. And once we look at the dimensions, we first look at the three overall dimensions. So we have our overall length or height, and that should be an exact value that you can calculate. It's only the total height of that uh, shaft component that you have. You'll have the overall the dimensions here. And in this case, they've actually left out the overall length, which you would add in there. Okay, so you'll have your three overall dimensions. Other than that, what we want is we want mounting dimensions and functional dimensions. Now remember, mounting dimensions are how we mount this 